Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about system word problems part two, a continuation of where we have already begun with a system of linear equation uh, word problems. And these problems are specifically going to deal with money examples. This is a flip lesson, so we'll first talk about the protocol of what you should or shouldn't be doing. So feel free to take notes wherever appropriate or prompted, just like you would in a normal lesson. Some things will be clearly identified as notes, but Obviously, you can write down anything you like. We're also going to be doing some practice problems. So follow along, writing them down in your notebook, even possibly pausing the video and trying it on your own where you feel comfortable is definitely a good idea and encouraged or recommended. And some things not to do. Good show, but don't do that as you're watching this. So we're going to dive right into a problem. Um, this is what we're referring to when I say money word problems. So we've seen this in the past. Um, it says, at the movie theater, adult tickets are sold for $15. This classic scenario with different types of tickets, and you don't know how many of each type, and you have different amounts and things like that, are sold for $15. Senior citizen prices are $10 per ticket. At the end of one night, 100 tickets were sold, and $1,200 was collected. How many of each type of ticket was sold? So... Some questions for consideration since we are starting these fresh. What are the variables? Those are things that we want to be thinking of right away. How is price going to be incorporated? Right, This is a money problem. I see dollar amounts. A um, little bit different than some of the basic word problems we dealt with. So now all of a sudden maybe coefficients we have to worry about and where we should be putting different prices. And is there enough information? Hopefully. If there's not, we can't really create a system. So our goal here is to create a system and then use substitution or elimination to solve it. So let's try to actually solve this one. And we're going to follow these prompts. Similar to any word problem, we're going to start with let statements. Sometimes on a, you know, a given exam, a homework, um, it will be included what our variable should be. It might say like use A for adult tickets or something like that. We don't have that here, so we're going to identify what our variables are. I'm going to use X and Y. I could use A. I could use anything I like. Once again, since it wasn't identified or it wasn't prompted to do so. And let statements, not a fancy name, but that's literally what it is. You're telling whoever's looking it over, whoever's looking at your problem, what your variables stand for. So I'm going to say let X equal. And what are the variables here? The variables are, a good place to look, always the last line, actually like the question usually, how many of each type of ticket? So the types of tickets and how many of them are sold are what we're trying to find. Those are our variables. And when it says type, it's referring to the fact that we have adult and senior citizen. So I'm going to call x the number of adult tickets. Be careful, because we're not concerned with how much an adult ticket costs. So I wouldn't want to just say let x equal adult tickets and maybe not be clear. I want to find how many of them. I don't care about the price of adult tickets. There will be problems where maybe we want to find out how much something costs. But in this case, we just want to find out how many of them. So I'm putting the number there. Okay, and Y will be my senior citizen. Okay, now I'm going to create my two equations. I'm going to start with my number equation. So the fact that 100 tickets were sold. There's only two types. There's no, let's assume there's no child or student ticket options. If there's only two types and there were 100 total tickets, that means if I added, add the two um, tickets together, however many there are, whether it's 80 and 20, whether it's 99 and 1, if I add them together, I should get 100. Pretty straightforward. Once again, that's because there are only these two options and I have a grand total amount. No money involved, no coefficients, just straight up. This number plus this number should equal 100. My second equation, obviously, I'm going to be using the dollar amounts. You could probably guess what the right-hand side of this is going to look like. So we could cheat a little bit there. It's $1,200. Where does the 15 and 10 come into play? We're going to utilize those as coefficients, like the notes on the right side. And this is, I would call, like the money equation. So we had one that was just like a number. This is our money equation. Um, if each adult ticket is $15, that means however many of them sell, I sell, 
I'm multiplying that by 15 to figure out how much money I'm bringing in. So a quick easy example, if I sell two of them, I'm bringing in $30 and so forth. And same thing for senior citizens, but I want to use 10 because each senior citizen ticket is $10. Once I have those two together, notice I have them lined up as well, X on top of X, Y on top of Y. Um, I have my system created. Now solving this, we're not going to whip out graph paper and solve this graphically for a few reasons. Um, look at the numbers, they're rather large. We're going to solve this algebraically using substitution or elimination. In this case, I'm going to use elimination. You very well could, could do substitution. It's probably the same amount of work. I'm going to take the top equation and multiply it by a scalar multiple of, let's say, negative 10. I could also multiply it by negative 15 if I like. I'm going to do negative 10. I'm just going to rewrite this new equivalent system below. So I created an additive inverse for y. I have plus and negative 10. So these will have a sum of 0, aka cancel out. I have 5x equals 200, which if I divide by 5, I get x equals 40. And if x equals 40, that must mean that y is 60. So I've solved the system. I like with word problems. So let me give myself some space up here. I like with word problems to write my answer back where the let statement was, usually at like the top of your paper or a nice clear area because you're going to have all your work going on. It could get a little um, confusing. Stuff might get mixed up, um, especially because we're using variables and we, we've gone away from what they actually mean. So just so you don't label something as incorrect, good idea to write your answer back where the let statements were. So x, I just want to double check, was 40. 40 adult tickets and 60 senior citizen tickets were sold. So if I've solved it, check your answer in more than one way here. Check it in the normal sense of looking over your math for accuracy, just so you didn't put a negative sign in the wrong place or anything like that. And also check it common sense wise. Does it make sense? Did I get a decimal and, you know, this is talking about tickets? That wouldn't really make sense. Or did I get a negative and it's talking about something where negatives really shouldn't exist? Those are things that um, would, you know, fall into the common sense category for a real world word problem. And that's it. So I've gone through all the steps here. Again, writing your answer towards the top near the let statement just, just helps you organize your answer a little bit nice. Uh, sometimes you got a lot of work a lot of work going on towards the bottom of a problem. It can get kind of messy and I've seen it a lot where there's a lot of things going on and all of a sudden you kind of transcribe or make an error with what your answer is and you did all the work correctly. All right. So we're going to go back to that one in a second. I want to take a quick look at one more example here. We're still going to deal with money. This one's going to be dealing with specifically coins. It says, Odell has 19 coins in his car. He only collects dimes and nickels. If he cashes them in for $1.65, how many of each type did he have? So, once again, we're going to start with, think back in the notes, think back to the notes on the previous slide. We're going to begin with let statements. So, what are the variables here? Let's look at that last line. How many of each type? So, we're talking about types of coins. And we're not going to list every single type of coin there is. It says it's kind of a weird hobby to only collect these types. I'd rather collect quarters. But he only collects dimes and nickels, so those are the only variables we're dealing with. And once again, we obviously know how much a dime is worth. So we're not concerned with that. We're concerned with how many or the number of dimes that he has. That's really what we want, the breakdown of how many dimes, how many nickels does he have. And do we have enough information here? So I'm going to start with the number equation. He has 19 coins. So similar to that ticket example we just completed, if he only has dimes and nickels, and he has 19 altogether, that must mean that D plus N should equal 19. That's my number equation, right? No coefficients, no dollar amounts, just straight up this plus this should equal 19. Now, for the $1.65, my money equation, 
You're not always going to have, you know, a number equation and a money equation, but usually that's the format that it follows. Sometimes you could have two money equations. All right, and now, where are we getting the left-hand side here? It doesn't seem like there's much more information. Obviously, I'm going to be using D and N in some, D and N in some capacity, um, but the coefficients that are going to come into play here are not listed in the actual word problem. You're going to have to use some background knowledge of how much you know a dime is worth. Just like we used $10 and $15 in the last example, we're not told it here, but you do know how much a dime is worth. A dime is worth 10 cents. So my coefficient should be 0 0.1, 0 0.10 you could write, really 0.1. Okay? And that's the fact that however many dimes you have, if you multiply it by 0 0.10, that will tell you it's cash value, right? If I have three dimes, that's 30 cents, or 0.10 times three. And same things for nickels. Be careful with nickels. I see a lot of people write 0 0.5. That would be great if nickels were 50 cents. However, there's 0 0.05. I almost did it myself. 0 0.05 N. I forget. Okay, and that's equal to $1.65. And once again, that's my money equation. Money coefficients equal to some money amount. Now, this bottom equation can look a little intimidating. However, if you notice, each decimal is in the hundredth place. So if I multiply the equation as a whole by 100, I could just make it look a little less scary. I still have to solve it. I don't want you know decimals and it looks kind of weird. If I multiply everybody by 100 here, all of a sudden it looks a little bit more normal. Doesn't really you know, make a difference in terms of what we have to do next, but like I said, getting rid of the decimals might be a good idea if you're not really comfortable dealing with them. So for this one, I'm gonna do substitution since we did elimination with the last one. I'm gonna solve the top equation for D. So I'm gonna subtract N from both sides and I get 19 minus N. That's not good. So if D equals 19 minus N, I'm gonna replace D with 19 minus n in the bottom equation. So I'm substituting in. I'm going to distribute. Once again, the choice is yours. I'm just showing you guys <clears throat> both options of elimination and substitution. Usually word problems kind of fall in the middle of the road where um, either method is about the same. You're going to see in the problem that you guys are going to complete in a second, um, one method is probably a little bit better to use than the other. And that is 25, negative 25. I'm going to subtract the 190. So I get n equal to, if I divide by negative 5, 5. Meaning, I have 5 nickels in this scenario, where Odell does. I don't have any nickels. So Odell has 5 nickels, which means if I plug in for n, 19 minus 5 gives me my variable d, and 19 minus 5 is 14. So he has 14 dimes and 5 nickels. Do a quick mental check, okay, makes sense. 14 and 5 is 19, um, and 14 times 0.1 is $1.40. So 14 dimes would be $1.40, 5 nickels would be $0.25, cents. $1.40 plus $0.25, cents, $1.65. Okay, you can also check your system using matrices if you like. Once you have your system set up and you showed your work, if you do want to verify that you solved it correctly, matrices can certainly do the job as well. But you would, however, word problems could be a multiple choice, but for the most part, this is going to be a written question where we want to show all this nice stuff. We want to show the let statements. We want to show that we algebraically solved it. We want to show that we plugged in and substituted and did all this nice algebra. All right. And just to close out this video, you guys, I'm not going to leave this recording for 30 minutes, but you guys feel free at this stage to pause the video, copy this problem down somehow. You're going to be doing this. I'm not going to be solving this just yet. There is a Google form in the description, whatever we call that, comment area of this that you're going to fill out as instructed in class. It has a few prompts in there, and one of them is going to ask for your solution to this problem. So however you want to get this problem down, whether you want to copy it, like I said, pause it. Um, it's a quick little problem here. You're going to um, submit that in the Google form that you're filling out. 
So that closes out everything. We are going to be practicing with this in the following class whenever I see you guys next. So feel free to come in with any questions you have about this topic. The idea of this is to hit the ground running. So now that we've gotten the notes and the intro and the model out of the way, we can do a lot more practice in class. So feel free to ask questions. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching and have a great night.